So what we have been talking about entropy right now is we start with, again, a lot of general feeling or observation phenomena, like you in, all your intuition is, we say, you know, energy mass to disperse or start. Like that's actually um, what the beginning starting point when we discuss, we explain a lot of phenomena when gas expands in space, heat transfer from high temperature to low temperature. So this is where um, you can see two typical examples we have been uh, discussing. One is the temperature one, right? So this, is, you can relate this as energy dispersion. So here we have, uh, if you have some object that going from, uh, let's just say, I have a system. This system can be anything, you know, you have just, uh, pressure, volume, or T1. It can get to pressure, volume, T2. Uh, obviously, this could be, uh, the pressure volume could change. So if you know something gets heated up, generally speaking, you know the energy inject to it, it gets more random. And so uh, we actually don't really care whether how it's heated up. Uh, as we said, entropy is a state function, so we can always come up a way to heat it up so ever so s s slowly, so that if you go tiny step, and so and for every tiny step, the entropy change will be the tiny amount of heat, temperature, uh, heat put it in there. And so this is how we normally do this, to figure out the ent uh, entropy difference. So, uh, of course, if this is done on the fixed, let's say if, uh, if if it's a basically constant volume, then you can always be presenting the tiny amount of uh, heat injection being just using the CV, you know, the heat capacity corresponding to fixed volume. But it could also be, you know, uh, constant pressure. In this case, you would have use a different heat capacity. So that is. If you heat up some object, you always increase its entropy. And the, the way you uh, consider the change is you can, in reality, you could heat up very fast, but I just only care the entropy difference. So I was trying to imagine them doing uh, ever so slowly. So, you know, but of course, if you go a, a range of it, if it's a T1 and T2, then you would actually go basically integrate over the range. So either Right? So, and then, if the CV is a constant, that's relatively easy. So you just have a natural log, T2 or T1. So, uh, but obviously, again, if it's, uh, if it's, if it's a corresponding to a constant, this is a constant volume. If, if the whole constant pressure, you would be. So, just keep in mind, this is one way to change the system. Or if you notice two systems have different temperature, uh, whether it's uh, carried out with constant volume or constant pressure, you can uh, figure out the entropy difference of the two different states. Uh, if it depends on how you how the heating or how the system was differ from each other in another parameter. So this is just naturally how we um, use this. Uh, consideration. So go back to where we look at the, the two heat block, we used the strategy. Okay? So this is how we do it. But on the, the map, so this is one, one situation. The other situation we talked a lot about is at the very beginning. So we say, oh, okay, we have, uh, you know, a gas, the temperature, pressure, and volume. And uh, in the case of it actually become a bigger volume. And if this is carried out uh, on what we call isothermal process, so um, obviously the pressure will change. So if you keep temperature constant, so if it's isothermal, so the T is constant. So in this case, P1 will become P2. Now we have uh, discussed this earlier. In this case, um, 
we just like here, you can heat up something very fast, but uh, if I want, really want to know its entropy difference between the two states, I always try to find a way to heat it slow. Here, the gas can be expanded from here to here through a variety of different process, right? It could be just simply yank over the chamber if it's a separation, or ever so slowly to do a uh, reversible isothermal expansion. So the, the overall idea here is that you have uh, you can just calculate the reversible case, which is the difference of the work, and that is if we have the motor of the gas. So this is the, what we did earlier. So in this case, H, the entropy change of the mass dispersion is actually this, that is minus. I forgot this. So this is the error. So we end up getting this. So what you unify these two cases, you know, we can actually relate about the, the thermal energy dis uh, injection in the system, or even though in this case, all the heat you put in end up doing work, even though the energy didn't seem to be accumulated there. Because here, if you can, according to your first law, uh, it's zero, and internal, but you did put into uh, the heat in the system in the process. So that, although result no increase in internal energy, but it does cause the increase in entropy. This is something that why first law did not really, uh, uh, is not sufficient to explain this phenomenon. So to unify those two together, we end up saying, well, this is true. So we can definitely, um, Call this is a way from the macroscopic point of view how we can calculate uh, the entropy change for a system. That is, uh, if the system uh, was <coughs> putting heat under any reversible process, then the consequence of it is increase the system's entropy. Whether it is a result of an uh, increase of temperature or as a result of just simply occupying more space. Okay, so that's, uh, you want to unify them together. So here we actually use uh, one application. Today we, we just went through, we actually said that if you took object T1, if they're in the thermal uh, equilibrium, then they will get the same temperature T final we just talked about. So this virt virtually we, we call it zero small. That is, two, two objects uh, at some point could even have the same temperature. So the, and then you can use this formula to calculate the entropy change of each object. And then the way you use second law of some dynamics, basically you, you just said the dot as you know, the object one plus object, object two, dot s, let me rewrite this. Put in, that's what we did, right? We were so, and then then you can show if it's larger than zero. This is equivalent to the second law that we say delta S isolate for right. So quite a bit of application can be uh, following this way of looking at entropy change of each system if there is just temperature. But this part also, you know, you sometimes you see, you can get like, whoa, this is great. Look at how similar they are. You know, if you raise temperature, you end up have a natural log of phenomena. That this is how we end up, uh, we end up sometimes seeing some kind of uh, interesting similarity where we have an object heating up at entropy change is expressed as a two, temperature point where by nitro log. Here if you have ideal gas that expand into a bigger volume, the entropy change is also the end of volume and uh, the beginning volume. Now but the, there are some um, important difference here. This 
a phenomena of increased entropy that apply to any states. Liquid, solid, or gas. No matter. As long as I know what the heat capacity is, all good to go. But this you can't. So that's why last, I think last year I forgot which student, maybe Aaron, whoever asked me, hey, I can, I, can you ever use this? No, 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 you can't do this. Because if you, if you take a, a metal block and you, you, you try to do something to expand the value, but you know, because we don't have, the, for this to be true, we use that equation of state. So that is only a matter that follow these equation states. Its entropy change expansion will follow this. So be very careful about this. So we, we can't really randomly apply these. Um, so you can't really simply any, like a solid that volume increase a little bit so slightly, its entropy changes that. No, no, it's not. That's not the case. So the way we arrive here is because we do it follow this equation of state. So when it expands, we can actually figure out how much we were supposed to eat, put it in, and then that's how we actually get this. So this is only true for. The organs, okay? So we need to be um, quite aware of this. Um, so now today I won't have time to talk about it, but I will um, uh, again leave you to uh, review on your own. Hope you will uh, spend time to look at uh, lecture six. Uh, PowerPoint slide. Here we um, present another example that sort of like a situation here. So the application is if you have like a situation where you have uh, let's say two different gas, you have a temperature, pressure, let's just say you have n more of oxygen. You know, and then you have another temperature and pressure of N gas. This is another example where uh, I you will find out you can prove uh, the second law of some dynamics relatively straightforward. Is that is if you take the separation away, the two gases are going to just rush into each other and you fill up in the space. And then they're never going to do something spontaneous like this. All the oxygen molecules go on the left, so you know that's true. So I want you to go home to use this system to uh, prove it. But in here, I can, the, per the reason I'm uh, showing this is actually this represents another very common phenomenon of entropy application, that is the entropy of mixing. And we'll be uh, dealing with this later on when we talk about solution. So this is trying to kind of plant a seed when we later discuss what if we don't have uh, ideal gas? You know, you know, this is not only true for ideal gas to carry into it. But what if you mix ethanol and water together? Yeah, you, you know that the entropy can be high. Or maybe I should do a demo. I take you know, a bag of red ball, a bag of yellow ball, I put them, I just kind of scratch them all together after a little while, and you know, what's the entropy change? There's no heat, no work, no whatsoever. And they're just mixed up, and to, to really separate them. So you know that's an entropy process. So in principle, we should be able to kind of calculate what entropy change is. So this is a good, so this example has two purposes. One is, is give, give you another example to prove second law. So, so basically, after you um, let the separation go, so the oxygen molecules go everywhere, the nitrogen molecule, let's just try to put it in differently, it goes everywhere. And then you got a new system, let's say the same temperature, uh, the, well actually at the time we can, the pressure could be different, because it's only half of it, but the pressure can actually be so-called partial pressure. It won't matter, so in this case let's not to worry too much about this. So. Now the volume, let's say the left side is volume one, the right side is volume two, the total volume is volume one plus volume two. So how do you usually think about the entropy? So I'm going to write down very quickly here because 
uh, this part of this uh, today's class is just trying to give you an overview and uh, leading to what we want to talk about later. So everything here is just trying to set up so we can uh, see the broader range of the variety of way of using second law to consider problem. We talked about heat, uh, put the heat at different temperature together. Now we talk about gas expansion. I'm going to talk about gas fix. So this is one final example. Now, so I'm going to just quick. So you know when you have this, you just kind of in your head you go like, okay, just if you don't have time to memorize the equation, you just go, yeah, for any reason the temperature difference. Uh, it was okay. Natural log. The heat capacity, if it's a uh, volume CV, then for gas, yeah, the gas, if the gas was initially in a smaller volume, went to a bigger volume, uh, it was basically NR, natural log, of the then the volume, and then divide, that's what it is. If it's uh, a temperature cube, the same. That's all you need to do. In this case, it was simple. For the oxygen molecule guy, it was originally in this volume, it went to a bigger volume. It goes, because ideal gas means they don't really see other gas, they don't care, they just run everywhere to code. So for the oxygen, uh, oxygen the, the entropy change it basically is n oxygen r natural log. Now I'm going. I have more space than I originally can go. For the nitrogen, r uh, n nitrogen r natural log we want plus fifty. Now here is relatively easy to prove second law. Actually, you go like okay, delta s total is uh, delta s. Oxygen, delta S, nitrogen, uh, you know, this bunch of much, must be lost here. One, and then, so this is, a, you know, uh, added together. So this is larger. So to prove this point is easy, no problem. But sometimes, the reason I'm leaving this example is it gets even more interesting because I want to be quantitative as to what is the, uh, how can we calculate entropy difference when I uh, mixing 50% uh, ethanol with 50% water. Now, imagine you try to be a bartender, you try to impress those who already drink a bunch of beer or alcohol, say, hey, you know, do you know what the engine is? Because even before so they're sober, they probably <laughs> So the, but they can always use the excuse. Oh, wait a minute, guys, you should ask me before I drink. So uh, here you go. So you do. You can, actually. Um, so this is interesting. So I want you to go back and review this. Uh, finish the, um, uh, finish the uh, uh, reading the uh, lecture note, uh, PowerPoint number 6. So what, what happened is you can always use, this is the um, using Dalton's law. You can, uh, in the final state, you have actually the so-called molar fraction of each species. So you can basically convert this, the total entropy. This can be actually the, the molar fraction. This as turn is related to molar fraction of the um, oxygen, and this is related to molar fraction of nitrogen. <coughs> so uh, the definition of uh, the molar fraction of nitrogen is basically the more oxygen in the system plus the oxygen more plus the nitrogen more. And the nitrogen smaller fraction is basically the nitrogen small divide, but the total more total more of oxygen, the total more of nitrogen. Now if you actually um, can calculate this, you can substitute the molar fraction back into here and you will find come up a formula which I uh, will show in the slide, which I'm not going to run out of room to write. Time. So, uh, so this is what I just talked about. I, we don't stop here. We have we 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 can use this example as another example to prove that second law is true. That is, when they mix, it's a spontaneous process uh, shown in this slide. But I want to go more one more step by come up a mathematical formula to show what happens when you take uh, a volume of nitrogen, um, a volume of oxygen, they, you mix them up. And so this is a classical example of called uh, entropy of mix. And, and so it's the final example we use. Uh, I said something about
this is we derive this phenomena using ideal gas law. The reason I'm asking you to do the molar fraction is it turns out the most amazing part, I mean, without vigorous proving, is that even though we derive this molar fraction here, we can apply this to solution that behave like um, ideal gas, or we'll call them ideal solution. Uh, we're going to talk, talk about this later in the class. So that means if you look at a 50% ethanol, you kind of, you can calculate the entropy difference of these 50% uh, ethanol with, with respect to when each of the ethanol water are pure. As long as you can calculate the molar fraction of ethanol and water in the final state. So the point of I'm mentioning this example is that the sometimes you can actually uh, extrapolate the formula into the um, into the liquid state. So another subject for the future. But for for this week and the first two weeks review, pretty much we covered on a number of things. We're virtually, you know, in, when you read the book, with, uh, the book says, what is the zero's law of thermodynamics? Well, that basically is zero's law means two objects with the same, equal, some of you have the same temperature. Uh, first law, you know, you track the heat and walk, uh, walk down or back, then you can track it the internal energy. Uh, the second law is when we actually uh, deal with isolated system, spontaneous process, the total entropy is the same. So it's kind of review what we already have. Finally, you know, we can actually kind of say this when we deal with when you got the entropy of any subject at absolute zero end temperature, you can actually um, just see the heat capacity. You can calculate entropy if T at absolute zero, the entropy can be zero for perfect crystal. But if not, then you would have something called residual. So again, in the, in the so this is actually the third law. So um, this whole section here is trying to summarize what we have discussed so far. But I think this is just more like introduce you what. When you, when you look at the table, how they come up the entropy. Usually, uh, when you have a, a sometime when t equals zero for certain substance, that's not the residual entropy is not zero. Also, the reason is that this is also connected to um, the discussion when you talk about at the low temperature whether a matter has multiple orientation in the crystal atoms. Um, so. Uh, I, it, since this is kind of review, I, I figured this might be useful when you review the material for for first uh, you can do that. So I actually did the tape it, so I'm going to upload. So if you kind of want to use it as a review, this probably will be useful for some. Of you. Okay, I believe we don't have a class for Monday, right? So then just take advantage, review the material, and uh, uh, start thinking about. Look at the data on the midterm exam one. If you have any conflict on the schedule of that day, do let me know. Uh, Nick, do you have a Google Demo uh, competition or race? Yeah, just let me know. That's okay. We can always work that out. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.